Hey guys, in this simple tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add a background image to your HTML page. Now, on the left, I have a basic HTML page open in VS Code Editor. You can use any editor, even Notepad, it doesn't matter. To add a background image in HTML, we actually need to use CSS. CSS is typed between style tags, as you can see here. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to add a background image to the body tag, which will cover the entire page. This is why I'm using this body CSS selector. A CSS selector starts with the name of the actual tag or ID or class. Here, we're simply selecting the body tag by its tag name. And so basically what this means is any CSS that goes between these brackets here will be applied to the body HTML tag. Now let's find a random background image on Google. So I'm gonna go ahead and type background image and see what comes up. And I think I'm gonna choose this one. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna right click on it and click on open in a new tab. I'm gonna go check it out. To add a background image to an HTML element, you have to use the background CSS property. Now in CSS, the colon character is basically like an equals sign. So we're going to assign a value to this background property. And this value will contain a link to the image we want to use. Now go ahead and start typing URL, parenthesis, open, double quote, double quote, parenthesis, close, semicolon. Now copy the link from the address bar for this image and paste it into that space between the double quotes. Now, if you open this page in the browser, you will see that the image has been applied to the body tag. Now, you can use any URL as an image background in HTML, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save this image on the hard drive. I'm gonna save it in the same folder where I have my HTML file you must save this image into the same folder where you have your HTML file. It's not going to work if you don't do that. So I'm going to name it bg.jpg and save it in that folder. Now that we saved our image, instead of using this long URL, I'm going to replace that with just the name of the file, which was bg.jpg. Opening this file in the browser will apply the background image. At this point, this image is very small and it's tiling across the entire screen and that might not always what you need. So there are a few other CSS properties we can use to adjust our background image so it behaves in the way we want it to. You can use the background dash size property to specify the size of your background image. So it has two components first is 100%. Let's see what happens if we just set it to 100%. And if you resize that, it works pretty much like that. But the second parameter is the vertical dimension. And you can also use 100%. So if you do that, you will see that your image is stretched across the entire page. And it doesn't matter what size your page is, it's always going to adjust to the size of your browser. Just to show you how it works, if you set those 100% to 50%, let's just see what happens on the screen. Now we have four backgrounds equally repeating and stretching across the HTML page. No matter how you resize them, you always get 50% scaling. Now by using background-position property, we can center the image. And it has many different values, but we're gonna use center just to show how this one works. And as you can see, all of the pictures were centered around the middle. Now, you probably don't always want to repeat the background images, and so what you can do is you can use the background repeat property. And if you set it to no dash repeat, you'll only have one image showing up. It will still scale and resize according to all the other parameters we set using other properties. You can also specify multiple backgrounds on the same page. And to do that, you use the comma character and simply type URL again. And it works in the same way 
without the properties. So basically just add more stuff separated by comma. So here, background size, we're going to specify 75%, 75% for the second image. And let's see what happens on the screen when I refresh the browser. It's hard to see it, but the second background was added. So what I'm going to do is add another value to background position to align that secondary background. Instead of just center, you can use double values like here I'm using top space left. So let's go ahead and refresh the browser. Both background images still stretch according to the same values that we set. So now we can also change top left to let's say bottom left and this will move the second background image to the bottom. Let's change the background size to 25% instead and you will see that it will fit into that corner. Here I'm going to add a third background um, and put it into lower right corner. So let's see what that looks like. Now this last example is probably the most useful so I'm going to go back to just one background image to demonstrate how it works. Now the background size property, which is currently set to 15%, 50%, has a one word value cover. So if you set cover to background size property, it will cover up the entire browser without distorting the image. And it will literally cover the entire space. But if you use contain, the image will resize with the borders. So this is using contain as a value to background size property. So in most cases, realistically, you'll probably want to set it to cover or contain. CSS also supports gradients instead of images. So let's go ahead and delete all this and type background dash image. But instead of specifying a URL, let's use linear dash gradient value open parenthesis and type in some colors separated by comma in this case i'm going to use red yellow and blue and so basically this will create this effect css supports different types of gradients so but there's not much work here all you have to do is replace linear with radial and as you can see we will create a round gradient which will automatically scale across the browser size. And finally, the conic gradient, which is created by replacing radial with conic, looks like this. So using these gradients instead of background images, you can create a bunch of interesting visual effects.